What's going on guys? Victor here, back in Southern California with the man, the myth, the legend, Brian Norris of Fin Fetish Charters. We're getting bit right now. <laughs> Absolutely epic day out here. We got Brookie, we got the whole crew. Dylan. Yo, yo. Adam. Look at this. Ari. Look at the size of that fish. Brookie. You guys, we just had the trip of a lifetime. Caught so many different species as you guys see back there. Sheep's head, rockfish, yellowtail, the scenery, the beauty out here, sea lions, everything. It's just a completely different experience. Check out this deck of yellowtails. Hope you guys enjoy. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. Oh yeah. That's gonna get bit. I got a live squid on bottom. Yeah, there's something. Uh huh. Fresh one. We tight, we tight. Oh, another one of these orange things. So this is a vermilion. This one known as a red rockfish. Looks like very much like our rosies back home. We caught a ton of these yesterday in real deep water. We're in much shallower water right now, probably in like what, 80? 88. 88 feet. Gorgeous fish. We actually had these on the grill last night. Tender as can be, super flaky, real good, just cold water fish, super delicious. That's the, the watch out, rattlesnake. Yep. Rattlesnake. Look at the side, Watch out. Oh yeah. You yeah. don't want, you you don't want to get that very one. dangerous. You got it. There's only one way to hold these things, and it's the bottom of the mouth. So let me see if I can get there. But you can eat them, right? You can eat oh, yeah. them. They're, They're super, super tasty. tasty. Yeah. But any of these spines, and like if you try to grab them on the top, those are all spines right there, all up in here. Spines. So yeah, it's all these top ones right here. Those bottom two. Point venomous? Yeah. Oh yeah. You will yeah, not, hurt you for weeks. Yeah, you'll have a bad time if you get stuck yeah. by those. Have you been stung? Yes. You not have? Not. I have, yeah, and then for like six weeks on my finger I have like hurting swollen. That's a big sculpin. Yeah, that's nice. a that is a big sculpin, bro. You never throw them in the bait tank because it's like throwing <laughs> a, throwing a rattlesnake <laughs> in the bait tank. It's not He's waiting cool. to get you. But what a beautiful fish, huh? Uh -huh. yeah. It, yeah. It's almost like they even have like their skin. Like, they look poisonous. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's a head shaker. That that rig is like key. I know. The squid. They don't feel the lead. They just suck it in the squid. I always talk about to West Coast guys what you Florida guys do with the long mutton snapper leaders. Uh huh. Or it's a Another what? Sheep head. All right, first yeah, that starts it out. First ever California sheep's head. And that would be a California sheep's head. Not a giant, but still cool. Knocked off so many species this trip. Probably ten for Brick and I. You know Adam stays tight. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what this one is. We're getting a lot of mixed species right here. Almost 90 feet of water with the squid. This one's kind of pulling a little. On the bat, the, uh, the bait caster, huh? Oh, it's a sheep, that's why. <gasps> nice. No! Keeper sheep. This oh, is what I, dude, please get it in the boat. Yeah. Try this. Look at that thing. Hell yeah! There we oh, go. Look you guys, we got sheep's head at home, but they do not look like this. I've always wanted to see a, a California sheep's head. And is this a female? This is a male. Okay, this is a male. Yeah, that... so you can tell because the, the head, they're actually all female. When they were born? When they're born. And then the bigger ones of the school will actually turn into males. So if a male leaves or dies, the next biggest female will actually turn into a male. So it's, they're actually really cool species. But you can tell, um, obviously, because they got this big red line right down the middle. Uh, females don't have as pronounced of a forehead right here. A lot more smooth, and they're just pink all the way through. And then the, the females are like pink. Females are all pink, and yeah. the males have the black stripes. Yep. So and when they, they get a certain size, they turn male? It just depends on the school. So you can kind of tell what's really, you can kind of tell, you know, the, how healthy the, the population is based on the size of the males, right? If you're catching males that are short or under 12, the 12 inch limit, then that, that population has probably been beat pretty hard. But, okay. you know, the males this size or bigger shows that they're, they're pretty healthy. Oh, Great ceviche. My God. We got our your sheep's head get huge too, don't they? Yeah, they get uh, up to what 30 pounds. Yeah. Anything over probably I don't know 12, 15 is a giant, but yeah, they get up to 30 pounds, and they love to eat lobster, crustaceans, sea urchin. 
that one. Soft. We got a grass rockfish. Another shallow water rockfish species. It looks Ooh, like he wants to fight. Different than anything we caught yesterday, like 90 feet of water. Yeah, we're still very good. <laughs> All right, we got a female, female sheephead on a reverse dropper loop with a live squid on the bottom. You can tell it's a female because of the completely pink body compared to Adam's one with black stripes. It's a pretty nice sized female. Usually you don't get them too big because uh, uh, when they do get bigger, they turn into males. Is that a keeper or no? Um, it's totally a keeper if we do want to keep it. <laughs> I don't I don't know that we need it. Probably, what do you, you want to keep them? Yeah, yeah, we'll let this guy go. Okay, quick release here. Here he is. Nice little California sheephead. It's actually a, a member of the RAS family. I don't know exactly what the Florida ones are, but it's something something different. It's a sheephead. It's a big sheephead. <laughs> big male sheep's head. I feel bad, I keep taking the bites off. So, as Dylan was explaining to you guys earlier, this is a male sheep's head. Red in the middle, black bars, and you guys call them sheep's head. I think they look more like a hogfish or like a parrotfish. Comparatively, you guys see that mouth? Those teeth look way more like our hogfish than they do sheep's head. Our sheep's head? If you, have you seen? They're no, like... I agree. I agree. I've said the same thing about hogfish that they look very similar. Yeah. I think your sheep head and our sheep head are from co two completely different families. Yeah. Also, Absolutely. our hogfish is a wrasse and you said this is a wrasse. Right. Yep. Exactly. I mean, so beautiful. Look at the eyes. He's got purple, green, blue, pink, red, black. He's got like 15 different colors in his eyeball. Doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He looks like he's going to be a super white firm fish white firm flesh fish it's actually a pretty soft meat fish a lot yeah. of people like to compare them to like a poor man's lobster because they eat a lot of crustaceans and crabs and things like that and they have that kind of sweet flavor to them all right fresh squid just put down dylan's on that's a real fish right i hope so <laughs> it seems real yeah, we're hoping it's a yellowtail or a white sea bass or even a halibut it's looking real so far. Uh, we've been struggling with catching these giant black sea bass today, which is an awesome consolation prize. But hopefully it's another big, big yellowtail. It's coming up like a yellowtail. Sure doesn't seem like a... Might be, slow down, slow down, it might be a yellowtail. Things were getting real slow. People were starting to take naps, just put out a bunch of fresh baits. Fresh squid, all the baits have not been getting touched on bottom, but I guess something just swam through our slick. We've been chumming for about an hour, and it, maybe this all this condition coming together with the chum, just starting to get on us. Oh, it got color right under the stern. Yellow tail. Yellow tail. Yellow tail. Another medium grade yellow, beautiful fish. Right here. Oh, a, a schmedium yellow tail. Yeah, we take those. Nice Epic. little eight nice. to ten pound. What a way to revive the uh, the energy going on. It was a little slow there for like uh, let's say like an hour, hour and a half. But uh, we got a little eight pound yellow tail here. That just eight got to revived. ten pound yellow. He's they small, but he put up a great fight. He'll make sashimi all the same, and uh, we thank him for coming aboard for sure. Morale is back up, boys. It's on. Well, guys, the bite is turning. Oh, he got a good one. On the lead. Bite's turning yeah. on. But it has We're all trying something hook. different. Some guys have baits on bottom. I'm just doing a little squid rig with like a half ounce weight. And um, Adam got one on the bucktail. Ripping drag right now. Yeah, dude. Yes. Uh -oh. Adam's so turn. Man, put the work in today. Hooked a couple of black sea bass, a couple of heartbreaks. Hooked a sea lion, which is crazy. Finally got what we came out here for. Nice, probably 18 pound yellowtail. Beautiful. Round out the day here. 
starting to pick back up. Bucktail jig again. Big fish. No, it's hit. It's Vic. Yeah, it's Vic. Big fish, big fish on bottom. This was on a squid. Patience pays. You gotta just keep changing those baits out, making sure you got them out, and that school of fish comes through and you get bit. It's right here. I got collar. What is it? Yeah, right here. It's right here. A little, a little cutie. Yeah. Flip them. No flippers here. Nice work. Yeah, Vic. Quick work of a yellowtail. Yeah, a yellow little smaller model. Good. He is a yellowtail though. Circle hook right there in the corner. Our tally's up to five yellowtail now. You know, we ended the day yesterday with one. Today, we're up to five. Beautiful. Not quite as big as the one from yesterday, but they'll eat the same, just like the boys say, they'll eat the same. Just so epic. Just sitting down there, munching on some live squid. I don't know if we ever showed you guys these, but these were the sardines that we got at the bait barge at the beginning of the trip. Look kind of similar to ours, except they have these like seven or eight black dots along the side of them. But they're also not as fat. They're kind of leaner and way slimier. So I'm just doing a little flatline rig with a little egg sinker. Uh, we got another yellowtail going. Another, this is our seventh fish. If we get them to the boat, I don't want to cross, uh, cross that off until we get there. Feels a little better than my last one. My last one was probably like nine pounds. Hopefully this one's a 15 pounder. We'll see. It's an easy, he's, a, he's probably right near the boat. Beautiful. Spider wow. in the stern. Oh, so cool. Ew! Yeah. <laughs> oh, in the background, and another bite. one going. Fighters! You just got, yeah, bit. got bit. Yeah, you just got bit. You're I'm kidding. No. Coming, bro. On the float. Oh, double! Double! Lord. I'm slack. Freaking sea lions. Keep Dude, I thought ass. for sure that that Whoa. was yeah. Yeah. So cool, the float. That was we so just cool, had... Man. we. There's he nothing, hooked, I'm pretty sure a sea line, and this, I was reeling in to try to check it to make sure it didn't get in the sea line line. More? Float rig got smoked. <laughs> that was great. Oh in your hand. What yeah. is it? In your hand. I wasn't sure. I thought it was your line. I was like, I didn't want to put it in gear. That was so sick. Yeah. That's yeller. a yeller. Old yeller. Yeah, okay, Bryce, baby. One, Adam. Fresh baits down. Fresh baits down. Here's this one. Right? When these things pick it up, they just dump the spool. Very spool. On the float rig, look at that. <laughs> Alright. Get him, guys. Look at that. Killer. That's so rad. On the float rig. Yeah, that's a yellow. Come on, yellow. Come on, yellow. Nice yellow right there. Look at the ground. Look at the ground. Oh, we're big. Been finished. Woo! That would be like <laughs> going on. What's going on around? Where here? is everybody? Where is everybody? <laughs> I don't get it, Ari. We're out here all by ourselves again. Oh man! What's going on, bro? All right, guys. This might be the last fish of the day. We just took all the fish out to get a nice group photo thumbnail. Absolutely epic trip out here. Like I've been telling you guys, if you ever want to book the trip of a lifetime, check out my buddy Brian Norris, Fin Fetish Charters out of Southern California, he's out of Marina Del Rey. Honestly, a bucket list trip. We got on so many different species, just such a good crew. Captain, mate, laughs, good vibes. It really is, I mean, you, you couldn't ask for anything more. We've been on so many different boats and a good captain and crew will make your trip. Oh, you're right here. You're right here. Oh. Oh. We just lost that fish. You guys see we've been fishing that trailer hook all day. We had like 65 pound braid tied to a stinger hook on our squid. But we probably caught like three or four fish on this and didn't change it. So probably got frayed and 
Unfortunately, it pulled, but probably another 20, 20 plus pound yellowtail too. This is a California sheep head or otherwise known as a sheep's head. Very pretty looking fish and one of the many species we caught with fin fetish. And I got to plug them again. These guys were great. Brian and Ari were extremely hard. We spent like 36 hours with them, had an epic time. And then it's funny that I don't know who started it first, who named which first fish first, the Florida sheep's head people or the California sheep's head people. But this looks much more like a hogfish or a parrotfish than a uh, sheep's head to me. The people. The people, the people. So we're gonna just go from the head to the tail. I think it's probably the prettiest fish I've ever filleted. And it's crazy how that this is a male and all the juvenile fish are females, they're hermaphrodites. I'd say it's pretty similar to um, our sheep's head in terms of color and texture. It's on the flakier side. Go over this rib cage down here. Very white meat. Just like that. I mean, it looks good. If you guys are interested in the knife that I use today, this is a Dexter. You guys can save 20% off use code Landshark. I'm very hungry. We're gonna whip this up, but we're actually taking it back home to Florida. So we're gonna go ahead and freeze these fillets. I'll catch you at home. So tonight's dinner gonna be really special. As you guys see, we're back in Florida, no longer in California, but we brought some of the fruits of our labor home. This is the yellowtail that we vacuum sealed with Dylan and Adam and Big thank you once again to Brian and Ari for putting us on the fish. But we're gonna cook the yellowtail two ways tonight. Yellowtail is a delicious sushi or sashimi style fish or a good seared fish. You wanna eat it, some part of it raw. So we're gonna do that a little bit later, but right now we're gonna make a little marinade for our yellowtail. That is miso paste. Pretty common now even in regular grocery stores, not even Asian grocery stores. I'm gonna add some mirin to it. Mirin is not quite as acidic as something like vinegar. It's a lot sweeter. It's gonna kind of balance out that real umami-like flavor of the soybean. Sriracha for some heat. This is something I did not do last time. Another thing I didn't do last time, I don't think, is added brown sugar. We're gonna add some brown sugar to this. Sesame oil. We're gonna do kind of an Asian Slovakian blend tonight. Um, I also made two really delicious purees. A carrot ginger puree back there, and then a kohlrabi, parsnip, and turnip root thyme puree. Finished off with some heavy cream. You guys are gonna see that in a little bit, but I was just trying to get prepared. My grandma used to make a ton of root vegetables growing up. Slovakians, that's my culture originally. That's what we ate, a lot of root vegetables. So, trying to incorporate that. In here, this is gonna be a little vinaigrette for our seared yellowtail later. There's orange juice in here, scallions, um, ginger, and some orange zest. I just want the liquid. I just want the orange flavor in here. Two tablespoons, because we got to save this stuff for later. Miso paste is naturally very salty, so low sodium soy, and just give it a nice savory flavor, and not a lot of it either. So what I just did with this yellowtail is I just took a neutral flavored oil, like avocado oil, just patted both sides, very minimal amount, like a teaspoon on each side. Okay, so now we are seasoning. As far as the dry stuff for our fish, it's just gonna be garlic powder and black pepper. No salt is needed because that miso paste is very salty in itself. So if you add additional salt, I think you're gonna be disappointed with the results. So just some fresh cracked pepper garlic powder, and then the rest of the seasoning is going to come from our miso, our citrus orange miso marinade. Put that on, I'm gonna do a little bit on each one and then kind of just lather it on there, massage it in. So we're just about finished up coating our fish. If you guys have never had miso, I wouldn't say it tastes like miso soup. Miso soup is a little bit different. Like pure miso paste is uh, earthy. 
I guess you could say super earthy. It's fermented soybeans. I think it's really delicious. It's got so many different uses and it's like in a completely class of its own. You can add citrus to it, like I just did. You can add spicy stuff to it, um, salad dressings, vinaigrettes, whatever you want, you know? That's gonna be our fish right there. I'm gonna go in the oven soon. Yellowtail, 425. It's a pretty thick fish, so I'd say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. I might pull it out a little bit earlier, hit it under the broiler, really get that color on the top of it. I just took the fish out because it's gonna go under the broiler. But what we're gonna do is little our, our little stir fry veg real quick. So oil going in the wok, it is nice and hot. So we got some baby broccoli, red onions, some carrot gonna go in. We're gonna add some sesame oil. Some ginger and garlic. Now we're gonna add our bok choy. Bok choy does not cook as long as the other vegetables. And you could eat it raw, just like this. Oh, it's delicious. For a little tang, we're gonna add some rice vinegar to this. Add some acidity. This was not salted or peppered at all, but we're gonna do a little soy. And you let the vegetables speak for themselves. Vegetables have a ton of flavor within themselves. You don't need to dress them up that much. These fish just were under the broiler and look at that color. Pulled out at the perfect time. So earlier I told you guys I made two kinds of purees. So this right here is a ginger carrot puree and it is absolutely delicious. So watch this, watch the magic happen right here. Okay, we're gonna do that. But to complement it, this is, like I said, our kohlrabi, turnip, and parsnip puree with thyme, infused with some thyme. We're gonna go right here. Okay. You get the two blends of flavors. We got our stir fry veg right here. This is our miso broiled yellowtail. We're gonna finish our yellowtail with some sesame seeds and garnish with a little scallion. Not only are we gonna have the yellowtail broiled, but we're gonna sear it as well. So a non-stick pan, real high heat, gonna go in with sesame oil and some avocado oil. This is the yellowtail. I saved like the primo cuts. You wanna use the shoulder piece of the fish. Generally, the shoulder piece is, in my opinion, the best for seared. Um, this is just a little black pepper. It seems like a lot, but it's something I actually learned in Massachusetts with Chef Chad, if you guys saw our lobster video. Black pepper goes a long way and it's not really overpowering. We flip after like 15 seconds. Does not need very long. Just wanna sear the outside. Now we slice. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful pink center. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna put our, this is soy, orange juice, ginger, scallion, rice vinegar, and some honey. And go right on top. So we ate at Sassafras last night with Chef James. Uh, the, the whole gang did. It was a, a lot of fun with delicious food. Now look tonight get spoiled again with chef victor look at that plate talk about presentation yes this fish from california I, I don't know if it's because of the fish the way victor prepared it it tastes as good as it looks i, I dipped a piece of the fish 
and this little white stuff that he put there, delicious. And then I dip it in this um, yellow stuff that he put there, delicious. The whole thing is just gorgeous and delicious. I don't think I can go out to restaurants and eat fish anymore. Uh, you know, I can go and eat, you know, clams and mussels and things that that Victor doesn't cook, but I, I can't go eat fish anywhere, man. This this is just at such a high level. You know, like I said, Chef James last night, Chef Vic tonight, we are getting spoiled. How about you, Mom? I'm loving it. All mm. the flavors are great. The fish is awesome. I like yellowtail, California yellowtail. Love it. Yeah, Victor definitely did this fish just justice. I can definitely tell it's a it's a great piece of fish. It, it tastes amazing, but as you can see how he prepared it, like the visual aspect of it, it looks great, but it, it's just it's cooked to perfection. Like the, the small glaze it has on top, like the crispiness out of it. Everything is so so perfect. It's it's kind of mind blowing. It's 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 like too good. It's it's really like up there where you're like, was I that hungry or what? It, it's 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 crazy. It is crazy. It really is. This this isn't normal. You know, I really don't think this is normal. I mean, I ate fish all my life before I, I met Victor, and I thought I did pretty good. But the fish that I eat over here, it's not normal. Trust me, nothing normal about this. <laughs> The flavor is insane. I was not expecting the texture of the fish to be like that, the taste of it, everything just works so well. I'm like, this is one of my favorite dishes so far. Really wow. good. <laughs> Thank you guys. Absolutely amazing. You always wonder how frozen fish is going to be, but we vacuum sealed it, brought it home perfectly, and it's been in the freezer for a couple weeks, and that was absolutely amazing that i don't even know what else to say that dish was so good everyone's already said it but like compliments to victor's skills like i don't know if you call him a home chef or a home cook whatever he is like he's always loved cooking i've known him for 10 years and he's always loved cooking but his skills have just excelled and it's really like inspiring to see how much he tries to you know, get better with his skills. He's always learning and he loves learning and trying new things. And that like really makes me inspired to even step out of my comfort zone with cooking. So I hope he inspires you guys because you see it. He makes some amazing dishes. So good job, Vic. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. That was so kind. We just finished eating up all the seared fish. I'm super happy with tonight's dinner and um, happy to cook for these guys. I actually started this at three o'clock today but I'm just very happy. I, I learned a few new things in the kitchen, like Brooke said, and you know, that's what it's about. Think of the kitchen as like your toolbox. One day you put a wrench in, one day you put a screwdriver in, and you just build upon it, and then you learn and learn and learn, and then you can just come up with things, and um, it, it really is fun. It's nice to cook for people, and um, I really enjoy it. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Big thank you once again to Brian and Ari. Without you guys, none of this would be possible, as well as Dylan and Adam. Dylan and Adam have helped us vacuum seal all this fish, and let me tell you, vacuum sealing makes the world of difference. I couldn't have told that this fish was frozen at all. So, until the next one, see you.